This morning, as a community, we gather to mark the golden jubilee of the priesthood of Monsignor Lucio Mascarenas. It is an occasion of celebration and thanksgiving for the many graces God has showered upon Monsignor. This golden jubilee is a milestone of a life manifested and magnified in fulfilling the call to love and serve. We in the Diocese of Belgaum were blessed by his wisdom, ability to listen, sense of humor, and above all, his spirit of compassion which led many to see and know the goodness of Christ. His abiding devotion and fruitful service in the vineyard of the Lord has touched the hearts of thousands of students and parishioners and inspired many souls. The list of his efforts and accomplishments these last 50 years of priestly ministry would be long indeed, but what is important is the faithfulness with which he brought the presence of Christ into countless lives. The work of evangelization often begins by forming personal relations with individuals and showing them the love of God. And this Monsignor Lucio did to the full. At this Eucharistic celebration, let us lift our hearts to celebrate God's faithfulness, abundant graces, and his unlimited generosity towards our dear jubilarian. We do so in a spirit of genuine gratitude for God's call to Father Lucio, whose yes was generous and committed. We pray that the Lord may continue to walk with him, bless him with good health peace of mind and happiness. I quote from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ.
Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we have gathered here this afternoon to celebrate the golden jubilee of priesthood of, of our dear Monsignor. Lucio Mascarenhas. He was ordained in this very church 50 years ago. Only thing is that we have gathered in the morning, he was ordained in the evening. He has many pleasant memories to remember and many occasions for which he would like to thank God for his grace and mercy. Let's also join with him in this act of his to praise and thank the Lord and show our gratefulness for, his, for the gift of Manjino Lucio to the church. And that our prayers be heard, let's acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. <coughs> I confess to Almighty God and, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for, me, for me to the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of apostles Peter and Paul gave us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those whom you, of those through whom she received the beginning of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison but earnest prayers for him was made to God by the church. Now when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak round you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street. And immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Your response shall be. the Lord at all 
times. Praise of Him is always in my blood. In the Lord, my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm very happy to be here this morning with Monsignor Lucio Mascarenhas to celebrate this golden jubilee of priesthood with him. And I'm sure even the priests who have been limited in number because of the circumstances to are happy with him, to be with him. I'm particularly very happy because I was present for his ordination. I was an altar server at that time and I was standing at that corner with the crozier of late Bishop Ignatius Lobo. And as often as he shows me that photo standing with the crozier, I always tell him, I ordained you. And today I'm very happy to recall those incidents that took place that evening in this very church where he was ordained a priest. Before I go into the meditation, and reflection on the gospel and the other readings. I would like to tell Monsieur Lucio that we are indeed very grateful to God and to him for the wonderful service of the past 50 years. As an assistant 
in the erstwhile diocese of Belgaum, which included even the diocese of Karwar. He was assistant in Honava, Kumta, as a student of Beit, as parish priest of various churches, principal and teacher of schools, rector of the Minor Seminary, and head of the commissions, especially the family and the SCC lady also. As we thank God, I would like to reflect especially today on the gospel. The feast of the two stalwarts of the church, Peter and Paul, indeed has lot in common with the celebration of today. One was a leader, the other one was a proclaimer. One was the first pope and the other one was an itinerant preacher. My dear brothers and sisters, in order to understand today's gospel, today you need to visit a place called Banyas in Israel, almost touching the border of Lebanon. It is called Banyas because there was a temple dedicated to goddess Pan on a mountain beset with white marble. And I think that Panias, as it was called those days, has been corrupted and today it is known as Banias. It is also known as Caesarea Philippi because towards the time of Jesus, Herod the Great built a temple dedicated to the Caesar. It was entirely a pagan territory and to this territory Jesus takes his disciples to find out whether his time had come to go to Jerusalem to be persecuted, to die, to die on the cross and to rise again and ascend into heaven. To understand better, we need to have a look at St. John's chapter 7, verse 2, wherein everyone was going towards Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of the Tabernacles or the Feast of Tent. They were going towards Jerusalem and Jesus went with his disciples up north in the opposite direction to a pagan territory. They were celebrating the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of Sabbath, the Feast of Tabernacles. Both the feasts, Sukkot and Yom Kippur, fell very close by, within three, four days. This year we celebrate the Yom Kippur on 15th and 16th of September, and the Feast of Sukkot or Tabernacles on from 20th to 26th of September in this year 2021. So, the matter of only three, four days. Both were interconnected and connected with the atonement of the sins of the people of Israel. In olden days, it was not today, during this time, sacrifices were offered after touching the animal on the very rock <clears throat> on which Abraham wanted to sacrifice Isaac. And that rock became a very important rock. Now in this background, we need to study the gospel of today. Everyone was going to Jerusalem to sacrifice on the rock. 
and Jesus was in the north in a pagan territory where not a single Jew was found. And he asked the question, who do the people say or think that the Son of Man is? And they gave him various answers. And then he asked a direct question to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replies, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the words which are very important. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, he says to Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now I would like to bring you back to the rock of Abraham, where he wanted to sacrifice Isaac. Christ seems to be telling him, the old rock is over, the Old Testament is over. You have expressed that faith. That you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And on this faith, on this rock, I will build my church. And he has built that church which we enjoy today by professing the same words of St. Peter himself, that Christ is the Son of the living God, the Savior of the world. My dear brothers and sisters, we have seen these words or heard these words who do you say that I am? And the expression of faith of Peter. We need to go back or go towards or to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 21, verses maybe 14, 15, and 16. The resurrection is over. And Peter says, I go fishing. He goes fishing. And then they don't find anything. Jesus comes and tells them, cast your net on the other side. And he does it. They find a big hole of fish. And after that, Jesus was on the banks of Sea of Galilee. He was cooking food for them. They come, they recognize Jesus. And Jesus asked St. Peter the question three times. Peter Barjona, or Peter, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. Again he asked, Simon Barjona, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then he says once again, tend my, or look after my sheep. Third time he asked the same question and Peter gets very, very upset and but he says yes lord i love you then he says feed my sheep my dear brothers and sisters at the ordination of every priest too some questions are asked and the candidate to priesthood is asked to answer the questions the questions pertain to his faith, questions pertain to his pastorality, questions pertain to his life as a priest, life of continence, celibacy, obedience, poverty. 
and to all these when the priest answer the candidate answer answers yes he is accepted to be ordained a priest simon bar jona do you love me similar questions are asked there too 50 years ago the same questions were asked to monsieur saib monsieur lucio i was present when he replied to those questions and today he is here to celebrate the 50 years triumphantly of having lived what he had promised 50 years ago a life of a priest is nothing but a life of sacrifice just because he has promised to be sacrificed himself to be broken himself to make himself available to all to be not his own any more but to be a person dedicated to the people i like that beautiful motto of pope saint john paul ii totus tuus all for you o lord this exactly the life of a priest in the modern time offering himself as fully belonging to god and belonging to his people which both saint peter and saint paul lived to the best of their ability both were the pillars of the church one was the leader of the church and the other one had an entry a little bit late though he was a persecutor of the church but then once he was his heart was changed on the way to damascus he became totally committed to the lord monsieur lucio got himself totally committed to the lord 50 years ago on the day of his ordination let us thank for all the sacrifices that he has made and have come to this stage today to rejoice with his brother priests and others the people of god and thank god for all that he had received during this 50 years a final piece of advice to him very often when we celebrate 50 years 60 years 75 years i am old now everything is finished everything is over no maybe the best is yet to be continue just like st paul says i have run the race and won the reward let me tell you you are still to win your reward amen may I request you to stand to profess the faith i believe in one god, god the, the father, father almighty, almighty maker of heaven and earth of all, of all things, things visible and, and invisible, invisible. I, believe i believe in one lord, lord jesus christ, christ 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, as we have gathered here this afternoon, let us raise our minds and thoughts to God on this occasion of the Golden Jubilee of priesthood and ask Him to shower His blessings on all of us. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that they may show care and concern for the poor, the sick, and the dying. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the vocations that Catholic families will pray for and nurture the gifts of occasions to the priesthood and consecrated life from among their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may be inspired by Christ's example to be agents of care and service to those in need, especially during this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Monsignor Lucio Mascarenas today, as he celebrates his golden anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood, may he be filled with courage and strength to carry out the responsibility entrusted upon him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For late Mr. Nepo Musino and late Mrs. Maria, parents of Monsignor Lucio Mascarenas, Lord, grant them an everlasting home in your kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a while and offer our personal prayers to God. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and grant us what we have asked for. Grant us also those things which you need the most in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith. Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so, each in a different way, gather together the one family of Christ and revere together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Oh, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our Pope Francis, our Bishop Derek, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all we have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, 
and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with, with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul made steadfast in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Derek Fernandez, Bishop of the Diocese of Belgao, Very Reverend Father Philip Kuti Joseph, Vicar General of the Diocese of Belgao, My dear brother priests, My dear well-wishers and friends present here, as well as those following this celebration on the YouTube. During the Eucharist celebration, Along with you, I have thanked God, our loving Father, for all the blessings showered on me all these years. God has been truly a Father to me, taking care of me at every step. 
God has revealed his love to me through different persons. I wish to mention some of them. In the first place, I'm very grateful to my late parents. They took utmost care of me and encouraged me to be a priest. My mother, after the evening rosary, used to narrate some stories of St. Francis Xavier. Father Joseph was now St. Joseph was, St. Anthony of Padua, etc. These made deep impression on me and inspired me to join the seminary. My sincere thanks to all my siblings and relatives who stood by me and accompanied me during my priestly studies and even thereafter. They have been a great support for me till today. In a special way, I wish to mention here my late brother, Father Mauro. He was a man of prayer and a great devotee of Our Lady of Rosary. I learned from him the importance of the recitation of the Rosary. He prayed it every day, and 11 years back, he died with a Rosary in his hands. I cannot forget at this moment my cousin priest, late Monsignor Nelson Mascarenhas. After the completion of my priestly studies, I had some crisis. Monsignor Nelson spoke to late Bishop Ignatius Lobo, who readily accepted me for Belgaon Diocese. I'm very grateful to the Pillar Society. It was there that I was, that I was molded. What I am today, it is to a great extent because of the guiding light received from my professors and spiritual directors at Pillar Seminary. My sincere thanks to all my classmates who prayed for me and stood by me during the crisis. I'm very much indebted to all the bishops' administrators late Bishop Ignatius Lobo, 50 years back, ordained me in this very place and entrusted me with various responsibilities. He was my guide, my mentor. <coughs> I'm very grateful to His Grace, Most Reverend Bernard Morris, His Grace, Most Reverend Peter Mashar, late Monsignor Peter Matthias, and Father Eusebio Fernandez. I have no words to thank our present bishop, Most Reverend Derek Fernandez. As he himself mentioned, he was present for my ordination, for my sacerdotal silver jubilee at Ubli, and now he is here for my sacerdotal golden jubilee. Dear Bishop, my sincere thanks to you for all that you have been to me for the last 50 years. Thank you very much for your inspiring homily and for your words of appreciation. Well, you asked me, in the, the race is not over. So I have got in mind to spend my remaining days writing books and writing some regularly some articles to India, Varad in East in Pilar, where I used to con contribute when I was a seminarian, and to Uzwar. On this way, I'll spend the word of God to my writing. I'm extremely grateful to all the people in the parishes, as well as in the institutions where I exercise my ministry. All of them accepted me as their own brother and friend. I am much obliged to my brother priests and religious communities. They always supported me in my endeavors, invited me into their parishes and their communities to break God's word for them. My sincere thanks to all the priests who joined me in this Eucharistic celebration. I am very grateful to all the well-wishers 
friends and relations who are following this celebration on the YouTube. I'm much obliged to Father Jack, Father Maxim, and Father Pramod for all the liturgical arrangements and live streaming on the YouTube. My sincere thanks to Sweeney and her team for the flower arrangement. I'm extremely grateful to Ryan and his choir members. They have sacrificed much of their time for rehearsals. May God bless you for your melodious singing. Ryan has also taken a lot of pains for a collage that you will see in the screen from a few moments from now. Thank you once again, Ryan. You'll be able to go back to see certain things. Play, see, you'll see me playing football also in those one of those uh, slides. My sincere thanks to Clara for the introduction to the Eucharist, as well as to all the proclaimers. I'm very grateful to George, our sacristan, and his team. My sincere thanks to Mr. Sanjay and his brother. I'm very grateful to so many persons who worked behind the scene to make this day a memorable one. May God bless you all. I'm not distributing any souvenir of my jubilee. I prepared two books. One, my golden priestly journey from my birth till today. The other one, 50 golden prayers for a happy life. Some traditional prayers, others composed by me. Due to the lockdowns, they could not be printed. You'll get them shortly. Thanks to one and all. May God bless us all. Sao che habe, disa disa. 